Hi, welcome to the Northwest Carp and Angler's Diary Fishing Blogs. Today I'm back on the Shops Union Canal to talk about law fishing in coloured water. Morning. As you can see a boat's just gone through. Uh, this is the Shrops Union Canal on the main line just outside of Chester. Uh, it's part of what the boat is called the Cheshire Loop and it runs from here out into Cheshire right the way around and back again. It takes about a week for the boat to complete so it's ideal for holidays and things like that so this particular stretch of canal is probably one of the busiest in the country. Uh, as a result of that, as you can see, the canal's quite narrow. Uh, the boats going through, they chain the bottom all the time, so the water's permanently the colour of dairy milk chocolate. For law fishing, that makes things quite difficult. The fishing on this canal, it's not impossible, even though it's a tricky law venue. Um, a lot of people look at this venue and they see the colour of the water and they, they leave, they go away. Uh, they can't see the law, yeah, well, what's the point? Well, fish don't just see with their eyes, they've got a system called the lateral line which can di detect vibrations in the water and water movement. Um, the pike and perch living in this canal are quite capable of hunting without their eyes and uh, we have to play to that when we're law fishing. Obviously there's not much in the way of features on the canal uh, the biggest features of all are the margins either side, two marginal shelves either side of the canal, one near, one far side. And the fish tend to congregate around them. Uh, the canal chain in the middle means they don't like to spend a lot of time in the centre channel, but they can be caused by fishing in the edge with a method we call dibbling, which you'll see me doing in a minute. Because the fish in this canal hunt without their eyesight, we need laws that vibrate and make sound. So I'll take you through some of the laws I've got and show you why I'm using them and in, in what way I'm using them. Okay, so this is classic dibbling. This is how I use my laws. I'm standing well back from the edge of the canal on the soft grass rather than on the concrete at the front. I've got the rod just dangled over the edge and I'm running the law about a foot from the bank the fish are usually in the margins and the reason I'm keeping it that far from the bank is I'm working on something called a sphere of detection and I'll come to that when I look at the laws closely in a few minutes time. So I'm using this sphere of detection and I'm working my law close to the bank and sooner or later I'll come across a fish and this is basic dibbling. That's all there is, just working your law up and down the margins I'm zigzagging today, I'm lifting the lower off the bottom and letting it drop back down again and it's just going up and down, up and down as it zigzags and I'm working my way along the margins and all the time I'm doing that the paddle tail on the lower is throwing off vibrations which the fish will pick up. As you can see I've hooked one here, that was a decent sized perch and I lost it. I was not happy about that at all. I've speeded this section up, as you can see I'm going along the canal quite slowly, uh, I don't walk fast, um, just keep the paces nice and light as well, don't go stomping up and down, because the fish you're hooking are literally underneath your feet, so you want to you wanna stay back and keep your footsteps light and just walk along slowly and you'll be fine. smaller than the last one but uh, look how greedy this one is I mean it's it can't be more than three inches long and the laws a third of the size of its body look at that the 
greedy perch. At least they're biting today. There's a better fish for today. Again, he's virtually swallowed that law. Come here, give me it back. <laughs> Still grabbing hold of it. <laughs> give me it back. <laughs> the small one but we're catching and the water's chocolate coloured so all is not lost just because they can't see with their eyes doesn't mean they can't hunt and as long as you've got a law that vibrates you'll catch Can't do much with this, I've hooked a decent pike. <coughs> I'll have to get the net. Here we go. Nice jack pike. About three pounds, something like that. Three, maybe four pound. Taken on the copy two shad. Again, just bounce along the margins. Even though they can't see, they can still hunt. And if we use laws that vibrate like the copy two shad with that lovely rubber tail okay. we can still catch these in water that's chocolate coloured it's getting back well i was so far away from the camera when i hooked this one only sm only small you had no chance of seeing that but you get the idea we dibble along the margins just bouncing that lure up and down and working it and that's where the perch are and the pike and you can cover quite a lot of ground but sooner or later you'll find them um, that's nowhere near as big as the one I've just lost but hey ho fish is a fish right let's take a look at the laws I'm using well I've had to take shelter under the bridge because it's pouring down so I thought this would be a good chance to look at some of the laws of use of fishing in coloured water. The undisputed king of pike laws on the canal has got to be this fella. That's a Rapala jointed shad wrap. And you've seen me using this one before, it's an absolute belter. It's, it vibrates so much, you can actually feel it coming through the braid on your rod. Your, your rod tip goes when it's going through the water and it makes such a racket. When you take it under the bridge, it actually echoes off the walls of the bridge. And uh, you can fish the canal with this, you can tow it up and down the margins if you want. Or you can fan cast with it. And if you fan cast with it, within half a dozen casts, if you, if you go round in a, in a semi-circle, within half a dozen casts, anything that's within the area 
will know that's there and you'll usually get a hit within half a dozen casts. It's an absolute cracker that one. Uh, top law for pike on the canal. Now most of my canal fishing is for perch and I have small rubber laws for that and I like to use these, that's a copy two shad as you can see. I've got them in white and this one is chartreuse or like a luminous green. Very, very bright colour. Uh, although the water's coloured, we try and make, make use of any sight that they've got, even though it's not very much, but most of the time the fishing here, the hunting by, by, by vibration. And what I like is the paddle tail. That's called a paddle tail. Now, when you retrieve it through the water, it thrashes like bad at the back, sending off loads of vibrations. Or if you're lifting it up and down, it, that, that tail is constantly, it's hammering away and uh, the fish will home in on that. If you imagine a ball, so say you've got your law here, uh, a perfect sphere around it, so say 12 inches that way, which is the size of a ruler, a foot or 30 centimetres, 12 inches that way, 12 inches that way, up, down, any way you want, 12 inches, like a sphere or a ball. Uh, the, the vibration's coming off that. If you get it to within a foot, of a fish they will pick it up via the lateral line and they will know that that base is there even though they can't see it and that's how we catch fish dibbling the margins about going past more coloured water that's not fishing <laughs> no it's instructions ah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're nice people, they're boat people, but that's me swim trash for another 20 minutes. So yeah, uh, a severe, a ball of detection around the law, about 12 inches, 12 inches in a perfect ball with your law at the center working away. Uh, if you get it to within 12 inches of the fish, it will know it's there even though it can't see it. And that's why dibbling the margins is so good. Okay. So, law fishing in coloured water, it's not as difficult as it looks. The coloured water actually helps us in some ways. Um, the canal is pretty featureless. The biggest features on it are the margins themselves, the canal walls, which is why the fish get close in. You know, they don't want to be in the middle where all the bottom's being turned over all the time, so they tend to stay in the edges anyway. And the dark water means that they can't see us as well, so it, it cuts both ways. Okay. Hiya mate. God, it's a busy day today. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you've got that. There the laws are used. I've also got another one which, have, which I'm just starting to use. White in colour. It's called a Vibro Worm. Now, it's got the characteristic paddle tail that I like. Uh, all the laws of fish on the canal have got a paddle because I like the vibration of them. Uh, this one is kind of ribbed. I don't know whether you can see that. So, as that law's working, the water will pass in between those ribs and it'll help to generate vibration. It's called a vibro worm, that one. Uh, again, bright colour, white, can't get any brighter than that. And uh, I think that's going to be a winner on here as well. I haven't actually tried it yet, but I'm going to right now. And we'll see if we can catch something on it. Um, yeah, that's a two inch one. Hopefully it'll work well. It's also impregnated with flavour, this. It's got a squid flavour. So uh, we'll see how that works. But the copy two shads certainly are my absolute first choice for perch fishing on the canal. Right, let's go and see if we can catch something on this one. It's another pike. Again, just going along the margins. This one's fallen to the vibro worm. I actually haven't unhooked it yet. Let's uh, see if we can get it out. There we go. Where are you? There we go. As you can see. 
the fibro worm works in coloured water as we kind of expected it to really there we go I've been here for a couple of hours two pike I'm not actually sure if this isn't the same one as before to be honest it, uh, it can't be any more than about 20 yards away from where it released the last one Again, about three pound, four pound, something like that. And uh, it's just come to dibbling one of those baits along the margins, letting that rubber tail vibrate, the paddle tail, and uh, they know how to find baits without their eyesight. So law fishing in coloured water is not so difficult after all. That's it for now. Uh, I'll be back in the new year. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'll either be looking at canal bridges or I'll be on the River Deep pike fishing. I'm doing some carp fishing over Christmas. So look out for a carp video pretty soon. But for now, I'm going to return this fish and get myself off home because it's chucking it down. See you next time.